Hello everyone, welcome back. So, today uh, we are going to um, learn how to solve forced vibration case. So, we have the SDOP system that we solved for the homogeneous case. So, we, there is a spring and it is attached to a mass uh, of say M and then there is a damper. So, the spring constant is K and the damping constant is C and the mass is represented by M. So, the degrees of freedom in this case we have X of T and uh, we have also a forcing function F of T. Now, the governing equation of motion in this case is M X double dot plus C X dot plus K X is equal to F of T. Obviously, this is an initial condition uh, defined at t equal to 0. So, x 0 is x naught and the velocity that is x dot at t equal to 0 is also defined. So, these are the two initial conditions. Now, that is the problem statement. So, today we are going to solve this equation uh, for uh, forcing function f of t. Now, we have already solved the homogeneous part that means the total uh, solution x of t, it has two components x of t d, that is the complementary function plus x of t that is particular integral. Now, this complementary function we have already solved when we have the right hand side equal to 0 and we apply the initial conditions. Today, our task is to solve this particular integral. Now, before we do that, if you recall, uh, what is the first part x t of c f, if you recall it is e to the power minus eta omega n t c cos omega d t plus d sin omega d t. So, that is the solution uh, we derived earlier and there are two constants c and d and that we evaluate from the initial condition. So, that is what we have already solved. So, today our first task is if we define this f of t as say f naught a constant that means if I draw the schematic diagram. So, we have time t as time progresses we have a forcing function which is constant that is f naught. So, this is our f of t. Now, before we solve uh, the equation uh, that is governing equation of motion we can intuitively conclude the nature of this solution. Because we have a linear system and we have a constant forcing function, just imagine if we have a portal frame which actually we idealize by this SDOP system and we apply a forcing function which is say F naught. Then what will happen? This portal frame will actually deform in this direction. So, this there will be a deformation and because this f naught is constant for all the time obviously what will happen there is no chance that system will come back but there will be a permanent deformation and this deformation also we can quantify if this is delta so delta is equal to the force that we apply divided by the stiffness the lateral stiffness uh, of the system provided by the two columns that we can see in this portal frame. Obviously, the solution will be same for um, this SDOP system also. So, if we apply this F naught which is in this case constant, obviously the response which we will get is also constant and if that is the case 
if x of t it is constant obviously if we differentiate that function we will get 0. So, the velocity and acceleration component uh, due to this forcing function will be 0 because this forcing function if not it does not change with time it is a constant force. So, obviously the particular integral in this case will be equal to what the force that we apply divided by the lateral stiffness of the system. And if we combine these two we basically get the total response or total solution. So, in this case it will be x of t is equal to e to the power minus eta omega n t. I do not write the details of this third bracketed term which is already there plus then f naught divided by k. So, we have the total response due to a constant force. Now, our next task obviously is to find out the two constants c and d and here I just draw your attention that whenever we have a forcing function then first our uh, task is to find out the total solution and then once we find out the total solution then uh, using this total solution the closed form expression that we get here. So, this expression we have to use to satisfy the initial conditions and that is the difference between what we did earlier because in the earlier case because of the uh, 0 right hand side we had only the first part. So, this part was there and uh, we evaluated C and D based on the first part only. But here that is not the case we have to consider the complete expression and then we have to satisfy the initial condition. So, if I differentiate this expression what we will get? So, minus eta omega n e to the power minus eta omega n t then the third bracketed term which I am not writing for the moment plus e to the power minus eta omega n t then within the third bracket we have the first term that is minus c omega d sin omega d t plus d omega d cos omega d t. And uh, if we differentiate this uh, second term obviously that will be equal to 0. Now, what we have to do now? We have to satisfy the initial condition. So, if we consider the first initial condition, so x 0 is equal to x naught. If that is the case, obviously x naught is equal to, we have to put 0 in this expression. So, if I put t equal to 0, obviously e to the power minus eta omega n times 0. So, that will be uh, e to the power 0. So, that is 1. Then within bracket we have c times cos omega d t times 0. So, that term will be there c and then plus d times sin of omega d t at t equal to 0. So, this will be 0 which is multiplied by 1. Then plus we have f naught by so, if we just remove this part, so what we have C plus f naught by k. So, let me write it once more. So, what we have here C plus f naught by k. That means, what we get? We get C is equal to x naught minus f naught by k. So, that is the first condition we apply and we get first constant that is c. Now, if we apply the second condition that means velocity at t equal to 0 which is x naught dot then we have the velocity x naught dot is equal to again minus eta omega n 
times 1 times the third bracketed term that means we will have c plus d equal d times 0. So, we do not write that part plus e to the power minus eta omega n times 0. So, this is 1 and here what we have is minus c times omega d sin omega d t 0. So, that first part is 0 plus d omega d times 1 because cos omega d t at t equal to 0 is 1. So, what ultimately we get is x naught dot is equal to minus eta omega n times c. For c we can write down x naught minus f naught by k plus d omega d. So, then what we get is d equal to 1 by omega d and then we have x naught dot plus eta omega n times x naught minus f naught by k. So, what we have? We have both c and d and for that we use the two initial conditions. So, we have solved both c and d and then uh, definitely we can write down the total response. So, in this case total response if I write down will be what e to the power minus eta omega n t c cos omega d t plus d sin omega d t plus f naught by k. So, what is c? c is equal to x naught minus f naught by k and d is equal to 1 by omega d and then we have x naught dot plus eta omega n within bracket x naught minus f naught by k. So, that is the complete solution when we have a forcing function which is constant. So, that was the forcing function f naught for all time. So, this is the forcing function and if I draw qualitatively the response of the structure. So, we have t and then in y axis we have the response of the structure. So, what is f naught by k? We call it say x s t that is the static response. So, if this is the say static response, then what will happen at t equal to 0 we have some displacement that is x naught. So, it starts from x naught and then So, this is the initial displacement is x naught and we can also draw the velocity here depending upon the slope at this point t equal to 0. So, initially it starts the vibration that is the complementary part, complementary function and then as time progresses because of damping then the initial transients actually dies down and then ultimately the response is uh, equal to uh, the static response x s t which is equal to f naught by k. So, 
this is the nature of solution we get when we have the forcing function which is constant. Now, obviously, depending upon the values uh, f naught and then x naught and x naught dot, uh, the slope may be going upward or if x naught dot equal to 0, then the, the slope at this t equal to 0 is horizontal. So, depending upon the values of these conditions x naught, x naught dot and the forcing function, the displacement may be positive or negative, but qualitatively this will be the nature of the uh, total response when we have forcing function which is constant. So, at the end of this uh, module, we will have a session where we will solve some example and there we will use MATLAB and using MATLAB we will solve this and we will also plot this. And uh, once we develop a code for different values of uh, initial conditions, we can plot and study the nature of the solution. But uh, in every case, we will see the vibration will start with some initial transients because of the initial conditions. And then as time progresses, then it becomes uh, the static response and this part onward where it becomes constant, actually it will oscillate and then ultimately it becomes constant. This part is called, so after certain time, so this part of the response is called the steady state response. And so this is the steady state response and the response before that is what is called transient response. So, initially the transient response dominates, but because of the damping the system it gradually loses that energy and then ultimately it reaches the steady state. So, that is the nature when we have a constant uh, forcing function. Now, our next uh, case is when we have forced vibration with harmonic excitation. So, what we have m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to f of t and there are initial conditions. But in this case what we have f of t is equal to the harmonic excitation. So, we have some f naught that is the amplitude of the harmonic excitation and we have sin lambda t. So, lambda in this case is the forcing frequency. Now, so if we consider the governing equation of motion and then if we divide both side of this equation using the mass m. So, what we have c by m in the second term x dot plus k by m in the third term times x is equal to f naught by m sin lambda t. Now, if you recall what is c? c is equal to twice eta m omega n and then what is omega n square? This is equal to k by m. Obviously, we can further simplify this equation. We have x double dot plus 2 i s eta omega n x dot plus omega n square 
x is equal to f naught by m sin lambda t. So, this is the equation we are going to solve and find out the total response of the system. Now, obviously, if we have a linear system and if we excite the linear system with a harmonic force, a sinusoidal force, obviously, the output will also be sinusoidal. So, we can propose a trial solution x of t is equal to a cos lambda t plus b sin lambda t. Obviously, x dot of t will be what minus a lambda sin lambda t plus b lambda cos lambda t and then x double dot of t is equal to minus a lambda square cos lambda t minus b lambda square sin lambda t. Now, we can substitute these expressions in the original equation. So, what we get is in place of x double dot, we write minus a lambda square cos lambda t minus b lambda square sin lambda t. Then the next term will be plus twice eta omega n and then for x dot we have minus a lambda sin lambda t plus b lambda cos lambda t and then for the third term we have omega n square for x we have a cos lambda t plus b sin lambda t. So, which is equal to f naught by m sin lambda t. Okay. So, now we have on the right hand side we have f naught by m times sin lambda t, but on the left hand side what we have? We have uh, if you see this expression uh, different combinations of uh, cos lambda t and sin lambda t. So, what we can do effectively? We can collect all the uh, terms for cos lambda t and similarly sin lambda t and then we can simplify this expression. So, what we can do? If we continue here. So, we have so the first term minus a lambda square cos lambda t. So, let us collect all the terms for cos lambda t. So, the next term is twice eta omega n times b lambda and then plus omega n square times a. So, this multiplied by cos lambda t. Similarly, we can also collect all the terms, all the coefficients of sin lambda t and then simplify. So, let us do that. So, we have minus b lambda square and then minus twice eta omega n a lambda and then we have plus omega n square 
b times sin lambda t and on the right hand side we have f not by m sin lambda t. So, what we have if we look at this expression on the left hand side we have cos lambda t multiplied by this third bracketed term plus sin lambda t which is also multiplied by this uh, third bracketed term you can see on your screen. While on the right hand side we have f naught by m times sin lambda t. Now, if we compare these two the left hand and right hand what we can easily conclude the coefficient of cos lambda t must be equal to 0. So, we have minus a lambda square plus twice b eta omega n lambda plus a omega n square this is equal to 0 and the coefficient of the sin lambda t in the left hand side must be equal to f naught by m. So, what we have minus b lambda square minus twice a eta omega n lambda plus b omega n square this is equal to f naught by m. So, we have two equations. Now, obviously, we can uh, further simplify this equation. So, if I simplify the first equation what we have? We have omega n square minus lambda square times a plus twice eta omega n lambda times b is equal to 0. Similarly, if we consider the second expression, so what we have if we simplify we have minus twice eta omega n lambda times a plus there will be omega n here. So, omega n square minus lambda square times b equal to 0. So, we have two equations and there are two unknowns. So, what are the two unknowns? We can easily uh, identify a and b. So, we have to solve these two equations to find out what is a and b that we will do in a minute. So, let us solve these two equations. Let me write it once more. So, we have first equation omega n square minus lambda square times a plus twice eta omega n lambda b is equal to 0 and then minus twice eta omega n times lambda times a plus omega n square minus lambda square times b which is equal to just let me check what we wrote in the previous expression. I think there is a correction here. So, it should be f naught by m small correction. So, we have here f naught divided by m. So, that is the first equation and this is the second equation. Now, obviously, all of you can solve this. I leave it as an exercise. I just write the solution for a and b that you can easily do it cross verify at your end. So, what we have minus twice eta omega n times lambda divided by omega n square minus lambda square plus lambda square whole square plus twice eta omega n lambda whole square and whole multiplied by f naught 
by m. So, that is the first constant a and the second one b is equal to omega n square minus lambda square divided by omega n square minus lambda square whole square plus twice eta omega n lambda whole square times f naught by m. So, I leave it as an exercise all of you please uh, check it at your end and if you have any uh, trouble then we can uh, solve this here when we will have our interaction session. Otherwise, it is very simple two unknowns and two equations we can easily solve it. Now, what we can do once we have a and b then we can uh, write down the complete solution. So, what is the complete solution? Again, if I write down the x of t, we will have e to the power minus eta omega n t and then c cos omega d t plus d sin omega d t plus obviously, we will have the solution due to forcing function. Recall what was the solution? Uh, if we go back to the previous case, so our proposed solution is this one x of t is equal to a cos lambda t plus b sin lambda t and we have already found out the expression for a and b. So, it will be a cos lambda t plus b sin lambda t and the second term is So, the second term is particular integral and this first term what we have is the complementary function and we have the expression for a and b. Again remember when we have to find out the constants that means, c and d because a and b we have already found out you have the expression here, but to find out c and d we have to satisfy the initial conditions and then in this case again we have to consider the complete expression when we obtain the expressions for c and d. So, for that we have to satisfy the initial conditions that we will do in a minute, but before we do that we can actually simplify the expression uh, what we have here. So, for that what we do uh, we can um, consider omega n square minus lambda square is equal to um, cos of theta and then twice eta omega n lambda is equal to sin theta. Now, if we do that then we can further simplify the particular integral. So, um, that we will do, but before we simplify uh, this expression let us first qualitatively plot the response and then we will see how does it look like and then uh, we will move further we will solve uh, this uh, c and d we will see their expressions and uh, we will also uh, simplify this expression for total solution. Now, just by looking at this total solution what we can conclude it has two parts first part complementary function again that is the transient part. And in this part what we have uh, exponentially decaying sinusoid. That means, as time progresses 
because of the presence of damping this vibration will come to 0, but we have another component in this case which is a sinusoid. So, obviously, what will happen? Uh, it will continue vibrating the forcing function which is p sin f sin lambda t. So, that means the forcing frequency in this case is uh, lambda. So, what we have? We have this envelope that is e to the power minus eta omega n t and then within that we have the initial vibration. So, after certain time then what will happen? It will continue vibrating with the same frequency. Earlier case this function used to go down when we had the homogeneous part only that means free vibration. So, it will gradually go down, but because we have a forcing function which is in this case sinusoid. So, once the transient part dies down then it will keep on vibrating with the forcing frequency and it will continue ever with that uh, vibration. So, obviously, we have again after certain point when this transient part will die down, we have the steady state response. So, we have initially transient actually we have uh, the total solution which uh, is the summation of transient and steady state, but in the initial part the transient dominates and because of the damping um, it gradually goes to 0 leaving behind only the steady state response. So, with that let us close here in our next class what we will do we will simplify this expression for the total solution and we will see uh, what is the fundamental nature of the response when we drive a linear system with a harmonic frequency. In this case the harmonic frequency is lambda. So, if we drive that uh, what is the nature of the solution. Intuitively we have already uh, uh, drawn what should be the nature. So, that is the initial uh, displacement and this is the initial velocity. So, the nature of total response we have already studied, but uh, we will further simplify this expression because that will give us a better insight of the nature uh, of the solution that we get uh, from this expression. So, let us close here, we will continue in your next class. Thank you very much. Thank you.